Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiterter, consultant audiologist and director of Cluax. Thank you for joining me in my latest video using the Waxscape. And here is a patient that was actually referred to me by a local specialist. Um, they attempted to remove this wax from this patient's left ear, but um, found it very difficult to remove. And I can understand why it was a really hardened um, block of wax and they have got a really, really narrow ear canal. Um, the, my colleague um, had offered to um, to see this patient again after several days of using drops, but this patient was going um, away on their holidays, so they ideally wanted to remove sooner. Um, so they contacted the clinic and we said we'll try our best and decided to use the wax scope. Whenever it's a challenging case like that, I like challenging myself using the wax scope as well. And so I'm just commencing with microsuction, but I had to remove this using the, the right ear hook in the end. And so it's really important when um, uh, you get trained to remove earwax, um, not only to get trained in microsuction, but also manual instruments, because you will need them. Um, otherwise, patients are going to have to go away and use drops for possibly weeks upon end, which is not going to be good for their overall health of the ear. And even then, um, uh, it's no guarantee that you're going to be able to remove wax using microsuction. So um, I generally use manual instruments quite a lot, um, as probably many of you are aware. Um, possibly I should be using it a bit more as well, but um, microsuction tends to be a lot easier um, because with manual instruments, you're having to insert and glide instruments in between the wax plug and the canal wall. So there's more chance of making contact with the sensitive bony osseous section of the ear canal. And they're a bit sharper, um, pointed and ended, so they're a bit more tricky. And also, historically, the manual instruments, I feel, weren't very good. But as many of you are aware, um, I developed my own range uh, early this year. And I've made some kind of changes and adapt adaptations to them, which really, really helped me in this procedure, actually. And I'll discuss that in a moment. Now, um, many of you may know my colleague, Richard, uh, Isherwood, also known as uh, Nurse Richard, and I think he's going to be uploading a video maybe today, um, uh, reviewing some of the manual instruments. And um, so Richard's not very has never been keen on manual instruments uh, because of their historic design, and so I've taken on these points, and and obviously through my own experience, I, I totally agree with Richard. I think Connor did a review recently as well, um, and the main issues with uh, previous designs was that they weren't refined, they weren't streamlined. So when you're trying to glide in between wax and the canal wall, uh, some of the manual instruments are too chubby. Um, with the ear hook, for example, the St. Bart's ear hook is too blunt for my liking. So in a plug like this, I wasn't, first of all, wouldn't be able to glide in the St. Bart's ear hook in between a small opening between the wax plug and the canal wall because it's just too chubby. But even then, I wouldn't be able to penetrate it into the core of hardened wax. So with a St. Bart's ear hook, if the wax is a bit softer or there's a big opening, then it's um, probably going to be pretty good because I can, you have to, generally with a St. Bart's ear hook, get in and behind the wax plug. Whereas with the right ear hook, you're going to see it now in a moment, I think, um, I'm able to penetrate into hard plugs of wax. Um, and... Because I've made them using carbon fibre, they're very strong and durable, but on purpose, we haven't made them as kind of tensile strength, the equivalent of metal instruments. Because metal instruments, obviously, if you do make contact with the canal wall, it's going to be far more comfortable for the patient. So it's getting that happy medium. Don't want the instruments to be too flexible, but um, I don't want it to be too rigid either. And I think I've just about got the right mix. Um, but obviously, we'll get some feedback uh, of our um, specialists using them. But I think it's something in the UK, not all specialists um, feel comfortable doing the ear hook. And I think that's partly, uh, I know when I first went for my ear wax removal training uh, almost 10 years ago, I wasn't, well, the training wasn't really good, if I'm honest, but I wasn't showing any, I wasn't providing any training in manual instruments. I was given some instruments, but I wasn't provided any training. So I had to work with my ENT colleague, Mr. Darius Rajali, who spent a lot of time with me and I managed to become quite proficient with them in the end. So this is the, the benefits of the right ear hook. Not only is it an angled instrument, so I can insert it uh, into the ear much easier, but I was able to glide it in the roof of the ear canal in the space of the wax plug and the, uh, and the, and the canal wall. And then I was able to use the pointed, the more tapered, 
tip of the hook to penetrate. So I actually got it into this hardened plug of wax. And as you can see, I managed to remove that. So there was no way this plug was going to be removed just using micro suction. So it's really important for anyone undergoing my um, ear wax removal training that you're not solely reliant upon micro suction because you need to, uh, to be a true ear wax removal specialist, you need to have the full repertoire of skills and instruments. Um, so they have got a really narrow ear, you would have seen that at the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.